Hello. Today I wanted to share a glass of champagne with you. The champagne I'm looking to share is Rionard's non-vintage Blanc de Blanc. So Rionard were the original champagne house. They were founded in 1729 by Nicolas Rionard. And Nicolas was the nephew of somebody called Dom Rionard. He was a Benedictine monk who'd been born in the Champagne region in the 1650s. Dom Rionard had been at a, an abbey near Paris and had seen the fashionable young men of, of, of Paris drinking sparkling wine. And he felt passionately that the region he'd come from, Champagne, was the ideal place to be producing this wine for the, for the young men to, to enjoy. He, and he wrote extensively about this. Now, he died in 1709 and left his papers to, to his nephew. Now, in, in 1728, Louis XV issued an edict, and this edict allowed the shipping of wines in bottle. So it was impossible to, to actually capture a sparkle that would regularly show in a bottle for it to be sold in export markets. The sparkling wines that Dom Rina had seen in Paris were almost certainly wines that had been shipped in barrel, had warmed up after the spring, and the fermentations perhaps had, hadn't quite finished in the, in the autumn when it had got cool and the yeast had stopped acting, and when they warmed up again, that was sufficient to create a sparkle in the wines of Champagne and perhaps the wines of Sillery. So, armed with his uncle's writings and following the edict of Louis XV, Nicola Rina, a year later in 1729, founds his Champagne house. And, and his family owned the, the house for, for over 200, well over 200 years in fact. It wasn't until 1963 that the house was sold to Moet et Chandon the uh, competitor Champagne House and then of course being part of Moet Chandon when uh, Moet uh, Hennessy and Louis Vuitton merged to form the, the global luxury goods group in 1987 Rionard became part of that. Now their, their essence as champagne producers is, is to focus on wines made with Chardonnay so they tend to make quite elegant styles I mean even they, they have a, a non-vintage wine that is a blend of, of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, but that's quite heavy with it, with the amount of Chardonnay in there. Their other speciality is rosé, because they're very proud that they were the first champagne house to make and export rosé champagne. So this particular wine is primarily made from wines grown in Premier Cru vineyards. And in fact, in, in, in Champagne, a, a Premier Cru, the entire village is designated as a Cru, and, and therefore those are the locations and, and the, there are wines from somewhere between 25 and 30 crews going into this particular wine and about sort of 20 25 percent of that is reserve wine so it's from previous vintages that have been kept in storage to add a little extra richness and roundness to the style that, that the extra age gives these wines so the majority of those wines will be from the, the preceding two vintages but some could be older now everything is hand-picked here. There are differing areas in, in Champagne, the sort of regions such as predominantly the, the Côte de Blanc, which is where Chardonnay proliferates. Some comes from the Montagne de Rennes. There is some from Cézanne's, and then also they, they take fruit from the, the Valley du Val. Being hand-picked, the fruit is, is then pressed as whole bunches, giving quite a clean juice. To further improve the selection there, they'll take only the first pressings, the cuvee, because that will be the cleanest and finest juice with the best sugars and the best acidity. The wine ferments in stainless steel tanks with temperature control and completely goes through malolactic conversion. So taking a little bit of the, the, the sharpness, the harshness out of the, out of the acidity and the crispness. Now the wine under, undergoes its second fermentation in this bottle and then to fix the, the bead, the fine mousse in, in the wine, it'll spend two to three years aging in these deep, Le Crayers cellars, which are something like 38 metres below the below ground, these sort of cool, deep chalk cellars under the, the city of Rams. And so it ages very slowly there. And as it ages, once the fermentation has finished, the yeast cells settle, they die, and there's a process called autolysis, where they release sugars and proteins as they break down into the wine and that helps fix the bead by adjusting the surface tension and allowing smaller bubbles to form and those bubbles can therefore be finer more persistent you know the bubble lasts longer it's less gushing and effervescent 
and also of course it, it gives yeasty flavours to that. Now at the end of that period of ageing the yeast is expelled from the wine during degorgement and there's a dosage added as, as the wine is topped back up to give this a sugar level of seven grams per litre and that that's at the lowish end of, of brute so although in a still wine there might be some sweetness evident on the tongue this is actually an almost completely dry style in fact so let's take a look at the wine shall we i mean i'm commenting about the bead i've been talking for a while the bubbles are still rising persistently they're very fine they're not gushing they're not um rushing out there there's there's still plenty of affairs and as i swirl it more released um, i'm using a relatively broad flute here some people don't like flutes but i like to to make sure that the the, the bead doesn't um doesn't leave the wine any quicker than it has to and i've never had a, a difficulty in finding a, a champagne sort of throwing its aromas at me and certainly that's the case with this where you've got a a wonderful yeastiness there's, i mean that's a really pungent yeasty note there's almost to the exclusion of almost everything else it's almost like sort of having a, a, a tray of unbaked buns as, as dough in front of you there's almost sort of a flowery note to it but when you look further there are some there's some lovely actually lifted notes of, of white blossom there's a lemoniness there is a sort of a slightly more hard to define minerality then almost a a chalky aspect maybe that's me sort of auto suggestion and the idea of sort of deep chalk cellars but uh, the, uh, i mean that's a, a quite pronounced actually but it's a lovely aroma so so let's have a taste shall we wow that's delicious Quite a lean, elegant sort of style of wine. Lemony, but lemony with a sort of a, a creaminess to it. There are those notes of blossom, there's, you know, there's something beautifully perfumed about the whole thing. There's a beautiful tension from the acidity. I'm really sort of salivating, and that is showing me more and more of that sort of citric freshness, but it's not a tart freshness. There's, there's something probably to do with the lees aging that's actually and, and the presence of reserve wines as well that's actually giving a lovely roundedness so although there's a sort of a lemony crispness there's almost a sort of a, a, a quite ripe apple sort of note to the fruit there is all that yeastiness there's touches of cream I'm sort of thinking of lemon meringue pie actually there's, there's, there's something lovely and, and, and rounded and inviting and a a sort of a warmth to it. I mean, the alcohol on this is 12.5%. It's it's not particularly high. Champagnes never are. And, and although the wine has a reasonable breadth for a, a Blanc de Blanc, it you know it, it is is more long than sort of broad and, and and fat. I mean, sometimes Blanc de Blancs can be very front of mouth and can fade quite quickly. This has got nice length, and I suspect that's a good use of of that quite large proportion of reserve wine in there. To, to give it a bit, bit more fullness and richness and in with the yeasty notes this is lovely i would say uh, blanc de blancs are fantastic styles to age for three or four years because they do sort of gain that bit more sort of uh, development in the yeasty notes it just pulls them together a bit more gives them a little bit more, more presence in the glass but i mean a wine that would be fantastic as an aperitif would be a beautiful match for seafood so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the tasting if you have do please put a like button if you want to join us again please do um, follow us do set yourself a notification and you, you'll be alerted when we release a new tasting note please leave any comments you have in the feedback box that would be wonderful i will leave some notes in the box below uh, there'll be a link to the wine searcher website so that you can find out where this wine's available its pricing and if you go to the profile tab there will be more information about the wine in the region and, and, and all background information for you. if you have any friends you think might be interested in watching do please forward the video to them that would be fantastic so hopefully we'll see you again thank you very much for joining us bye for now <laughs>